Raise your hand if you remember your first public speech. Great. Usually it's the one you never volunteered for, right? <laughs> Mine was at the age of 12 at my grandmother's funeral back in Spain. My older cousin had been chosen to deliver a eulogy on behalf of all the grandkids. But when Father Raul called him to speak, he was nowhere to be found. My boisterous little brother divulged, he's hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> Father Raul didn't flinch. Then we'll have Jesus deliver a few words in loving memory of his abuelita. <laughs> I was shocked, embarrassed, completely unprepared for such terrible topic. <laughs> My father whispered, go, but don't speak unless you can improve on silence. Hmm. <laughs> Utterly confused, I walked up to the altar and I stood there frozen in fear. At that moment, I would have rather been the one in the casket. <laughs> My little brother couldn't contain his infectious laughter. <laughs> in a few seconds, it spread like wildfire among the kids and to some of the adults in spite of themselves. <laughs> My mind went crazy trying to figure out what to say. But as I remained silent following my dad's advice, I had this life-transforming realization that I'm not my mind but simply the one listening to it. The one that can actually choose to be in silence no matter how loud my mind speaks. So I did. In that silence, I was able to let go of the pressure of speaking or looking good. In that silence, I was able to feel completely relaxed and embrace the moment. In that silence, I was able to quietly enjoy my family's laughter in spite of the fact that Father Raul didn't seem amused. This awakening allowed me to tap into the essential quality all great communicators possess. Now, I did not say great speakers. Great speakers can be eloquent, persuasive, charismatic, but they can also be self-centered. For instance, most dictators are also considered great speakers. On the other hand, great communicators genuinely care about others. They establish an emotional connection with the audience because they understand communication is not just about speaking well, but also about that which occurs in the space of silence. Listening. Great speakers speak. Great communicators listen first. Then they speak. Listening is only complete in the absence of words and thoughts. It's a silent awareness that quiets our voice and our mind. That chattering mind that can so easily get out of control, especially if we're speaking in public. That's when it can scream at us such wonderful thoughts as, you have no talent, or you're so boring, or simply, you suck. <laughs> We need to get out of the chatter of our minds and into the silence of our hearts where we can connect with our wisdom within, listen to our authentic self, and be fully present for the people and audiences we're called forth to serve. That's how we can become one with them and truly address their needs. That's how we can experience being in the now or in the flow or in the zone, as some people like to call it. That's how we can effectively manage the energy of the room and be humorous if our audience needs to lighten up or repeat an important point that may have been missed, or simply pause. Let the silence speak for itself. To be fully present when we present, isn't that the best present we can offer as presenters? The present of our presence? Patricia Fripp, the first female president of the National Speakers Association says, there are two ways to connect with our audience, intellectually with our content and emotionally with our heart. And then she adds, you don't need to connect with your audience emotionally unless you want them to remember what you've said. <laughs> 
we get out of our minds and into our hearts through the three zeros formula. First, zero resistance. We become fully present by embracing everything and everyone. Before beginning a speech, we can overcome any fear or resistance by simply taking a deep breath and establishing eye contact with our audience so we can connect with them at a heart level. Only then will they be truly receptive to what we have to say. Second, zero judgment. We use our silent awareness to release any negative thoughts or judgments that may arise. If while speaking, we hear our little nagging voice putting us down, we simply observe it for what it is and choose to remain grounded in our light. That light that will surely make us shine in the eyes of those listening to us. And third, zero attachment. We let go of any expectations. When presenting in public, instead of getting caught up in trying to look good or impress anybody or win a speech contest for that matter, <laughs> we focus our attention on our audience with the awareness that our purpose is not to get anything from them such as validation, but to give ourselves to them with love. My father thinks I joined Toastmasters to recover emotionally from his don't speak unless you can improve on silence advice. <laughs> but in truth, I joined because I was deeply inspired by the greatest communicators of all time. Jesus, Buddha, Mohammed, Moses, Krishna. Have you heard of them? <laughs> all into their hearts where they were able to connect with the power of unconditional love, be fully present to address people's real needs, and use their poignant storytelling skills to enrich lives. Vivid examples of how we can all release the attachments, judgments, and resistance dwelling in our minds and surrender to the awareness that is always present in our hearts. My Silent speech at the funeral was no laughing matter for Father Raul, who actually put an end to it with a slap to the back of my head. <laughs> but it actually provided my family with a much needed healing release. Perhaps my abuelita spoke from my silence. By transcending our chatter, we will all become not only great communicators, but also great healers to ourselves, our audiences, and our planet. Let silence speak. <laughs>